In the first part of the problem, our goal is to verify this relationship with some of the previous questions and examples that we worked with. And the first one will be uh, example 2.5, where 2.5 it involved a, an infinite plane or at least just a, a flat square here. And our goal was to find uh, the electric field at, on one of these sides right here. And the relation in the the answer that we got was that the electric field is equal to the uh, on one side is equal to sigma which is the charge density divided by two epsilon naught and it points in the direction that's completely perpendicular or normal to that square right here and that's useful for our relationship right here because the relationship that we just learned in the previous section talks about how the difference between the electric field on one side of a boundary perfectly flat boundary and the other side of the boundary, which points in the other's direction, is always going to be equal in our cases for uh, the ratio of the charge density for that uh, patch of uh, charge density. So it's the ratio of that of that charge density to the uh, uh, permittivity of free space pointing in the normal hat direction. And that's really useful because no matter what different type of uh, surface uh, charge that you have right here, you can always zoom in close enough, some close enough onto these uh, boundary conditions where you essentially have a flat surface right here, where this uh, this this difference actually applies. So going back to the example that we have right here, we can verify it, and I'm just going to go ahead and write uh, a little bit an annotation here where a is actually equal to this a right here is actually equal to above so that electric field minus the perpendicular for b for below and whenever we put our uh, uh, we make our substitutions for what we found here in the example problem they should actually end up being equal to the relationship that we found here so go ahead and plugging in for a above that we have right here which is just equal to sigma over two epsilon not putting in the normal hat direction minus and the other side right here points in the opposite direction because that normal vector is opposite to the uh, the other normal hat that we just had that we went ahead and, and marked as positive we couldn't just as easily mark this one as positive and then this one would have been negative but we'll just go ahead and just say this one is positive we just gotta pick one for reference so if that's minus and the other one's pointing the opposite direction it's gonna be the same magnitude which is sigma over two epsilon naught and pointing in the normal hat direction but since it's pointing the opposite direction we have a minus sign right here and when we go ahead and do that math it actually ends up being equal to the ratio of the surface charge density to epsilon naught right here pointing in the normal hat direction which is in line with what we had right here moving on to the next example that we need to verify this for this would be example 2.6 2.6 is a little different, so we have essentially two uh, infinite, I think they were infinite, yeah, infinitely uh, long uh, planes right here, and our goal was to find the electric field relationship between uh, in these three regions right here. So before I even get into it, oh, actually, one of them, important to note, one of them had a positive charge density, one of them had a negative charge density. And so let me go ahead and just start with one of them. So let me put this one off to the side and we'll concentrate on this one right now. And briefly just summarizing the uh, results from the example is that the electric field, since it's a uh, positive charge density, we know at least the magnitude of the electric field on both sides is going to be pointing away, essentially. It's going to be pointing away from the, the plane, right? And it's going to have a magnitude because it's an inf because it's a plane just like this one. It's going to have a magnitude of sigma over two epsilon naught pointing in the normal hat direction on one side, right? And so that means that this side is going to have the this side right here is just going to have the same uh, magnitude at least of it. It's going to be pointing away, right? Now, uh, if we look at this other one right here, since it's a negative charge density everything's going to be pointing towards it. I'm going to use a different color real quick just to help make the annotation. Everything's going to be pointing towards it because it's a negative charge density. So that's which way this electric field is going. And uh, it's going to have the same magnitude at least, but just different directions. I use the uh, arrows to capture the directions here. 
right? And I'll actually move this down here for this next part. So they're all pointing towards it. So whenever we look at holistically, we bring them both together. We see that there's uh, these both point in the same direction on um, between these two, but on the outside, and they kind of extend past. So this one is kind of like a more continuous arrow pointing this way. So we can go ahead and just write an arrow pointing here. And then this one is kind of like a more continuous arrow pointing away. So this points, oops, yeah, this points that way, right? So obviously on these two sections right here, the electric field is gonna end up being zero for both of these. But here in between these two regions, the electric fields uh, are gonna uh, combine essentially, right? So whenever you look at the difference between these two electric fields, these ones, uh, these ones are going to add together, and these ones are going to be zero. So the difference between these two is I'm going to explicit really right here on either side. So you could say above, but it's really just on one side. So the difference between an electric field on either side of these is going to be, we'll just uh, start with this one. So we'll just say uh, this is actually two, two times the electric field value right here, where the, where the value of the electric field is actually equal to. Uh, sigma over 2 epsilon naught pointing in the normal hat direction. But again, like I said, there's two of them, so we multiply by 2 minus the electric field, minus the electric field on the other side, which is 0 right here, pointing in the normal hat direction, I guess, technically. And so your to sum total ends up being the ratio between uh, the two factors which we've been using, which, of course, what do you know? is equal to the, uh, the relationship here. So even in the midst of uh, more complicated uh, charge configurations with outside entities, essentially, the difference between these two sides, e even if you did this side too, are all equal to, uh, are all gonna be equal to the same value. And lastly, we have one more uh, charge configuration in the, that we needed to check for problem uh, 2.11. One moment. From Problem 2.11, 2.11 here. In problem 2.11, we actually had something a little bit different. We had a circular charge density. This is just a circular uh, shell. If I can draw a circle, there we go. This was a circular charge density, so this is all hollow on the inside right here. And we found that the electric field on the inside, everywhere on the inside, is equal to zero. And you can go back and check that if you want. And uh, we found that the electric field on the outside here is actually equal to uh, epsilon naught, or, or uh, sigma over epsilon naught, and then the ratio of the radius of the, of the circular uh, charge density to the radius, the distance from the center that we are evaluating the electric field at. So this would, could be R, this could be R, wherever we have the point of the electric field. Uh, and it's pointing the R hat direction, so always pointing away from the center or away from the surface that's perpendicular to the sphere right there. So, of course, whenever we find, whenever we're trying to find the uh, electric field right at the boundary right here, we have uh, little r is equal to big R, and we'll go ahead and write that. So at the boundary, the electric field at the boundary, I'll just say bound, is equal to sigma over epsilon naught, the ratio of R squared over R squared, because R is equal to R at the boundary, pointing in the R hat direction, which means this is all equal to sigma over epsilon naught, pointing in the R hat direction. Right. And so when we try to find the difference between something just on the outside of this and just on the inside of this, which is the uh, which is the relationship that we have been trying to show works in, in the cases that we have here presented in this problem, if we say this is the above right here and we found that the electric field above or just above right here is actually equal to this, so it's be sigma over epsilon naught pointing in the r-hat direction minus the one that's just on the inside of it right here, which is zero. We find out that relation ends up being equal to exactly what we were trying to solve up here or show that actually is a correct relationship right here. 
pointing in the r hat direction also known as the normal hat direction for our circular chart so that relationship ends up working out in the cases that were in the problem and so that's the just the first part of the problem there's a, i think two more parts to this problem